in the year of our Lord 2022, during this era of widespread peace and tranquility in the world, I was shocked and amazed to learn that there has been conflict and upheaval in Europe. Now, I don't know anything about politics, especially that of which is based halfway around the world. But apparently, according to my sources, there's a guy by the name of Vladimir Putin that people on the internet seem to not care for. I don't know who Vladimir Putin is or what he does. I guess he's a magician because he's famous for making journalists disappear. Pretty crazy trick if you ask me. He also kind of runs things in Russia. Like I said, I don't know anything about politics, so for any and all information about such matters, I just discovered a wonderful platform where fair and civil debate takes place between only the greatest of minds that society has to offer and where all the world's problems are solved. It's called Twitter. As we have recently been shown how Hollywood is a beacon of love and peace, I wondered, what movie is Putin's favorite? Is it Citizen Kane? What about The Godfather? Well, if you thought one of those movies might be it, you are clearly thinking with your Western capitalist-centric brain. Naturally, his favorite movie is of Russian origin. It is 1934's Shapayev. Ah, of course, Shapayev. Everybody knows Shapayev. Well, in case you don't, it's a war film loosely based on a real-life Russian Civil War hero named Shapayev. Shapayev leads fellow Russian peasants of the Red Army against the anti-communist White Army. Think of it as Soviet Braveheart. It's the kind of communist, red-blooded, patriotic movie that makes it easy to see why a guy like Putin likes it so much. Did it affect or reinforce the kind of man he would end up becoming? I don't know. However, what I do know is that the New York Times in 2000 said in an article, quote, not Marx, not Lenin, but a hit movie of 1968 set a teenager named Vladimir V. Putin on the road to his career as a KGB agent. Or at least that is how Mr. Putin, now Russia's acting president and the favorite in the election on March 26th, described how, in ninth grade, he was smitten by the romance of working for the Secret Service. The movie, The Sword and the Shield, depicted the heroic deeds of a Soviet double agent in Nazi Germany. Unquote. With a patriotic movie like Shapayev being Putin's favorite, and him admittedly being inspired to pursue a career with the KGB because of the sword and the shield, it begs the durden s question, do the movies we make end up making us? And if so, to what extent? This question fascinates me, especially when it comes to world leaders. A lot of former leaders' answers are in line with what a lot of people would say and could be considered typical answers. According to Business Insider, Bill Clinton's favorite movie is High Noon. George W. Bush's is Field of Dreams. Barack Obama's are Godfather 1 and 2. Joe Biden's is Chariots of Fire. Hell, Queen Elizabeth II is apparently Flash Gordon. Figure that one out. However, Donald Trump said in a 1992 interview with the New York Times that his favorite movie is Citizen Kane, a movie about a media mogul who becomes a politician. Trump denied any correlation between himself and the movie or its real-life inspiration, William Randolph Hearst. This plunge into the rabbit hole of presidentially picked pictures led me to a 2019 article from The Diplomat, how a film influenced a U.S. president's decision to invade a foreign country. The article perpetuates the allegations that 37th President of the United States, Richard Nixon, was inspired by the 1970 classic, Patton, to invade Cambodia. Nixon denied this, but it's still fascinating to me and obviously still quite relevant when wondering how much influence motion pictures have on world leaders. This is not to put everything that happens in the world at the feet of movies. This is a movie channel, so I'm talking about movies in particular here. In my opinion, people capable of great or terrible things Things could be inspired by a number of factors. Before movies, it was books. Now there's video games. In the future, it'll be something else. It's the old adage of, art reflects life, and life reflects art. This was merely a pause and reflect moment for me to remember the propensity for influence of art on the individual. There's probably a young person out there who watched Avengers Infinity War and is a part of the Thanos had a point in wiping out half of humanity group and is going to become president 30 plus years from now. What impact on real life policy will the Mad Titan have? Or maybe this person will be influenced by Tony Stark's selfless act. Nah, this person will probably end up going the Thanos route. Stay blessed.